What's up, everybody? Brian Dole here with the NPG Podcast, and with me is the other host, Rico, Stephen Fortune, or Stephen Rico. I just turned my microphone on right now. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's fantastic. That's definitely for me. (laughs) Okay. um, How are you doing today, sir? I am fighting off some form of low-grade fever. It's like just teetering on the brink of fever and not fever. It's like my temperature was like 99 point almost fever. And it's like, no, sorry, you're not staying home today. So I'm just sitting here in my very cold back room, bundled up in sweaters, dropping my drinks on the floor. Oh, okay. Excellent. Good to hear. Uh, (laughs) Okay, uh, before we get into everything that we usually do, or what we're going to start doing anyway, um, we need to take a moment, I think, and kind of acknowledge something that's happened in the last week since the last time we did the podcast. Um, A couple people uh, in the entertainment industry passed away, first of which was David Bowie. Um, And today, as of this recording, Alan Rickman has died. Uh, both of cancer, I might add. So, um, it's been a bad year for this so far. <laughs> um, and not to mention all the other celebrities that have seemed to be passing like crazy even before the new year began. Um, Alan Rickman, I don't really have, you know, there's not really anything I can say. Uh, great actor. You know, he, to a lot of people, he's going to be Severus Snape for forever. Uh, to me, uh, being an older gentleman, he's always, he's, the great villain in Die Hard and uh, the Metatron in Dogma. And that's what um, I remember, I'm going to remember him most for. How about you? Uh, it'll definitely be Severus Snape. I didn't really uh, even know that he was actually in Die Hard until after the fact. I'm like, holy shit, that's who that was. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and also, uh, I actually want to point out um, people outside of Canada wouldn't really know this, but uh, Celine Dion's husband also died of cancer today. Yeah, I did actually see that. Yes. Really? The news gets yeah. out of this country? Yeah, believe it or not. Wow. Th- there are some Americans that care that whoa, whoa, what whoa. what happens af- out of the you know out of the country. Whoa. Not many. Not many. But yeah, I did see that too, and that's that's uh, it's too bad. David Bowie. Um, I'm not going. To, you know, great talent. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I've listened to every single one of his songs or um that I was a huge fan of his, but I do realize his relevance in the music industry and entertainment industry in general, um, you know, with his earlier work in the 80s and uh, whatnot. And even, I'm, I heard a couple of his newer ones today, and, uh, you know, it holds up, and uh, it's it's too bad. Both went away way too young. It's very unfortunate, and hopefully we can look forward to a year of not... Oh, yeah, you know what? Also, Lemmy from Motorhead... That was before yep. the year. Wasn't yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep, that's what See, I'm saying. That. Yeah, all, all three of the, all of them were cancer related, weren't they? I believe so. Yep. Jesus Christ. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, just want to get that out there. You know, we don't want to, you know, sour the mood too much. So we're just going to, you know, <clears throat> our uh, condolences and to the families and all that, and the fans too. And um, we're going to start the show. So, Stephen. What up? What have you been doing this week? Well, besides, uh, besides spilling drinks and <laughs> low-grade fevers. Low-grade fevers and drinks is largely the name of the game. No, uh, this week I have mostly been working, um, working as some more on my side business, and still on Battlefield 4. I looked at Fallout 4, and I'm like, uh, I just, I want to, I, I want to do it. I just, uh, I, uh. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't get into back into it. So I just run to Battlefield as my... You know, quick stop, play this for half an hour to an hour, and then go to bed kind of game. Yeah. That's just the kind of kind of life that I'm living right now, at least until I can get out of this little slump and actually, you know, maybe play all three Uncharted games, you know, eventually. Yeah, you might want to get on that. And I've also been twiddling around with um, more iOS applications. All right. Speaking of Battlefield, I tried Battlefield Hardline, and I know that's an older game, by you know, but um, started playing it and wasn't really feeling it. Uh, I think there's something with the mechanics. I just couldn't. Something's wrong with it. I just couldn't put put my finger on it. I'm sure there's a lot of people that like it, and that's fine. But for me, it just really wasn't my thing. Um, looked great, just seemed to play weird to me. Um, so. 
I'm done with that. Now, after that, I downloaded a little game, and it came out last year. Uh, I get it through Steam. It's called Emily is Away. And essentially, I think it, it's free on Steam. You can download it. But it, it's a game where your screen's essentially a uh, AOL app, Instant Messenger. And it makes the same noises. It makes the same noises like when people enter with the door opening and the you know leaving with the door shut. But essentially, you are you start off. You're graduating high school, and you're talking to this girl named Emily. Like you know, you want to hang out? Are you excited about college? Blah blah yada yada yada. And when you you get to choose your answer, but when you choose the answer, it doesn't automatically do it for you. You have to type on the keyboard like you were typing an actual message, even <laughs> even though. I mean, no matter what key you hit, it's going to spell out what it wants to spell out. And you hit enter, and you hear, bloom, 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 and message sent. And you go back and forth, and it's kind of a, and it goes on throughout your college years. It goes through like five years. Huh. Uh, the game itself is only like 30, 45 minutes long, but it's one of those games where at the end, you just don't, you don't see what's coming. And there's a lot of different ways that the ending could go, but essentially, it's the story about, these two people who had, you know, kind of had some feeling for each other, but neither one either, you know, knew it, and then both being kind of put into the friend zone. Um, so it's it's different at the very least. Is it going to be? It's not for everybody, but you know, if if you're bored at night and you just want to do something real quick to say that you did it, uh, Emily is alone is available on Steam, and that guy actually got on to a lot of people's. Um, list last year for games uh, that they liked, so yeah, it's not too bad. But that's really about it. I haven't seen any movies, I haven't watched any TV shows, I've just been kind of doing all that. That's it. Alright, with that having said that, I think it's time for some news. It's just then! Alright, you want to go ahead? Yes, okay, so um, of relevance this week, um, Apparently, Hitman, uh, we were talking about that last week, the new Hitman, I'm like, oh, wow, that's so great. Apparently, um, now Square Enix is making it episodic in terms of, like, they'll split it up into X many parts, so instead of paying $60 for the full game, you pay 20 here, 20 here, 20 here. I need to understand what episodic is, but just, like, kind of in perspective to what you were saying, how they're going to release more content as it goes on. Right. And, yeah, that was the original one. You you know, you buy the game, but the content you know, comes, you know, however often now. Now, you do have the option of paying the full 60 up front and still doing that, but it's, all, it's just going to be digital. It's not going to be a physical copy. Um, the first one is, is going to be $15, and it's the prologue and, I guess, the first uh, entry, I guess, first chapter or whatever you want to call it. And then after that, it's, I want to say it's actually, it's actually 10, but it takes you to a different country each time it does it. Now, um... I don't know. I think this is going. I think this is a topic for maybe next week, but I'm not sure how I feel about that game going episodic. But having said that, you know, it is what it is. So, how do you feel? Episodic will be the death of all of us. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, I got that out of the way. What's next? Uh, well, I wanted to touch on the latest PlayStation sale that actually launched earlier this do week. Do tell. Do you tell. It's like, oh, really? Okay, so we have the PlayStation Essentials sale. Essential, did I say Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Before you go on, is this going to be effective next week, or is it just the rest no, of the week? No, that's like right now, up okay. until Monday, January 18th. Okay, all right. So, uh, we have staples such as Assassin's Creed Black Flag Gold Edition for PS4. Uh, you can get that for $20. I'm not going to go through all of these, but right. um, like... You know, your Call of Duty Ghost for all you COD folks. Dragon Age Inquisition is in there, too, for uh, $14. GTA V for $38.99. I'm actually going to pick that up myself. I played through it on uh, Xbox, but, you know. Upgraded visuals, first person, online play. Hoo-ha. Hoo-ha. Also of relevance, actually, I just realized, uh, they released the three original PlayStation 2 Grand Theft Autos as either a bundle or... You can buy them separately for the PS4, emulated. Yep. Yay. Trophies. Yes. Oh, my God. God help me. <laughs> uh, there's let's... no helping you. No, there's not. Um, 
I just realized how many games there actually are in this thing. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of crap, including even like PlayStation 1 classic games, which are playable on PS3, PSP, and Vita. Yes, there is. Like Xenobears. So, Do it. So, I have a quick question. Do you have, are you an Amazon Prime member? Do they have that in Canada? Is we do, and it costs like a hundred dollars a month or a year, not a month. Jesus. Hundred dollars a month, Jesus. Can't no, it's, it's um, hundred dollars a year. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what it is. Well, ninety nine, but yeah, hundred dollars here. Now, what if I told you that when you reserve a game or buy a brand new game that comes out, because you're a Prime member, you get twenty percent off. What? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, that's a new thing now. Um, I can only speak for the U.S., and I, I want to assume it's for Canada, but who knows. Um, yeah, so if I want to pre-order a game, whether it's a the regular edition or one of the stupid big special editions, you get 20% off the game. Holy shit. Exactly. So, for all you game companies out there and big box places that sell games, yeah, do something about that. Um <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was a thing that happened. Was there anything? Well, there was another thing that probably happened I'm not thinking of. Watch Toe DB Games. Amazon's coming for you. You know, like those wrestlers. Yeah, no, I got it. I'm scared. Yeah, the ultimate um, warrior. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Possible burnout game being developed. This was broken by newgames.net. That's www.nugame.net. Possible burnout game. You go to Criterion's website. They put on uh, put up some uh, job postings uh, that involve a lot of uh, f- vehicle physics and programs and environments and things like that. Now, having said that, uh, could be a Need for Speed game for all we know because EA does Need for Speed as well. But in my personal opinion, Need for Speed is kind of losing or has been losing its uh, touch for a long time now, and I think EA needs to bring back Burnout. So, hopefully that's what it is. It might not be, but all signs point to it could very well likely be. I will buy that in a second. I would, too. Alright. That it? That's all we got? Yeah, actually, that is about it for the news section, yes. Alright. Now, it's time to uh, tell the people about what comes out next week so they can spend their hard-earned money. Oh, yes. Or, you so, know, pirate it, whatever works for you. Yeah, sure. I don't, um, I don't condone piracy, but you know, you know, you do it anyways. Oh my God! Not but, you. Uh, the, rep- <laughs> the representatives of the New Game Network do not condone piracy in any kind of way. <laughs> so uh, the opinions by the by yeah, by me do yeah. not reflect the opinions yeah, of New exactly. Game Network or exactly. or Brian. Exactly. <laughs> I hate piracy. Then yeah. edit this part out. <laughs> piracy? Bad. No, no, I'm not editing this out. I edited out something for you last week. I'm incriminate. Leaving. Um, Incrimination, that's what it, yeah, thanks a lot, appreciate it. Alright, no problem. So, what do we got on the list coming out next week? Well, I think it's what, the 18th through 23rd or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're, yeah, 18th would be the Monday. Uh, let's see, on the 19th, we have a return to the glorious, wonderful world of A Boy and His Blob. And this will be joining us on Windows, PS4, Vita, and Xbox Uno. Uh, let's see. Resident Evil Zero HD on Windows, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, and there's Xbox also, Zero. There's also the Origins Collection, which is actually both the original and Zero together, correct? That, I think, was actually just on the last generation. Really? The Origins okay. Collection. wasn't. I think that was actually just, uh, like, Wii, for some strange reason. Mm, I don't know about that. I have to kind of look. I'll have to, you can look that up while we're talking. Yeah, right. um, Anything else? I'll handle the next one while I look that up because now I feel like an idiot. Okay, yeah, don't. Uh, <laughs> the episodic series Life is Strange is coming out in physical format on the PlayStation 4 and the Ooh. Xbox One. There is another game, uh, I'm like an independent game called Klaus on PS4. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but in order to get an idea of what some of these games are, you can go to the New Game Network and look at the trailers for it. Uh, in the article for the releases. Uh, what else? We got another one for the Xbox One called Electronic Super Joy. I believe that was originally a P- uh, PC title. It's coming over to the Xbox One. Let's see what else we got here. I can. I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's for the Vita. It, it was for the um, PS3, I think, before then they just ported it over. It's called 
Atelier, Etcha, and Logi Plus, Alchemist of the Dust Sky is coming to the Vita. <laughs> the hell are they thinking? I don't know. It's craziness. Wow. And then, there, then you have a few other ones on PC. Uh, there's one called No One But You, uh, Sickness, Homeworld, Deserts of Karak, Marcus Level, Scrap Mechanic, Crashlands, The Rise of Chubton, Bloxivity, The Minotaur, and Death by Game Show. And those are pretty much all going to be on uh, Windows, I would imagine. So, that's all I got. What did you find out about that Origins collection? Seems like they're doing both, an Origins collection and releasing RE0 as its own separate thing, too. With the special Wesker mode. Where you get to play as Wesker and Rebecca. But, like, forget Rebecca. It's all about yeah, Wesker. I was gonna say, yeah, it is. It usually is, honestly. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Now, on to the main event, I guess. Um, this is kind of a, uh, it's a touchy subject, and I think you would agree that you and I are kind of, are pretty passive people. We don't really get, you know, all bent out of shape about a game being delayed or, you know, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, um, they'll finish it when they finish it. Like, it, exactly. obviously, they're trying to put enough work in it so that it, obviously, it found something right. that just burned the whole thing down. Exactly. And we don't get a bent out of shape if, you know, a series ends a certain way that, you know, we don't particularly care for. You know, things like that. So I guess what it really comes down to, and there's no real way to um, uh, to put it, but I want to talk about entitlement. Uh, specifically entitlement uh, with gamers and, you know, uh, movie fans or pop culture fans. Let's just say pop culture in general. Um and how that kind of has been, I don't know if plaguing is the right word. It's in, keep in mind, the subject, we're not here to diagnose it. We don't know where it comes from or how we feel, but it's just, you know, I'll use the example of Final Fantasy for, um, to start off with. Final Fantasy VII, you know, people have been wanting it for a decade. It gets announced. People, you know, the peasants rejoice. And then it lets out that's going to be episodic, and then that's where, you know, the, sh- the shit hits the fan. No, that's not right, you can't do that, that's not what I want, this is not, I'm not going to play it like that, blah, 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 blah. But, and I understand it from a certain point of view where it depends on how much each episode is, or how they're going to, you know, whatever the price is. If they do the thing like Hitman, where like 60 bucks, every time an episode comes out, it downloads. I don't, I don't personally have a problem with that, and here's why. Number one... In that case, with Square Enix, you could either get it sooner, or you can wait 10 years to get it on disc. Uh, number two, I don't understand the mentality of, you, you know, they're giving you what you want. But they're putting in their hard-earned millions, or yen, or whatever you want to put it, into making this game. But yet you feel like you should have some say-so on how it's done. That doesn't make any sense to me. None. I kind of feel bad about my uh, episodic will be the death of the world comment earlier. You know, and everybody has, you know, everybody has their thing. Like, I understand the concern. But let's, I mean, you know, kind of take it to another level, like with Mass Effect, you know. If you didn't like the way Mass Effect's ending was, that's your prerogative. There's no rule out there that says that you have to like whatever, you know, however something ends. But to go on these extreme tangents that I heard back in the day when that came out... You're not making the fucking game. Bioware is. They're ending it the way the writer or, you know, the creator of uh, Mass Effect is ending it. That's it. If you don't like it, that's fine. But to go on these tirades to the point where, you know, um, how should I put it? For them to go back, spend more money just because you don't like it to make a different ending is ludicrous. That's obnoxious. So, it's just like, where does, where does that come from? What gives, a, what gives anybody, me included, the right to dictate how, the, how publishers make their games? I'm just floored by your, uh, by your argument there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that was, that was very passionate. I, uh, I definitely respect that point of view. Now... Yeah, honestly, what like 
you have a movie, let's say, let, let's pick Tarantino. He's, uh, you know, he, he's fresh in the news lately with uh, Hateful Eight. Mm-hmm. So Kill Bill ended the way it did. Right. Because that's the way he decided it ended. Did anybody bat an eyelash? No. No. Mm-hmm. Just because they thought that that was a decent ending. However, then they turn around to play Mass Effect and don't respect that ending. I think uh, gamers in particular have the absolute worst type sense of entitlement. Yes, movie watchers, TV show watchers, they're up there. But right. gamers are literally the worst. Uh-huh. Literally. Yeah. Well, do, can you – what stems from that? Is it the con- – has it been the constant, um, let's say – you know, continuing the norm, so to speak, with, you know, having a game do well and then sequelizing it to give you more of the same. Um, I mean, have we just, have we just been conditioned to expect these things? That's just the thing. Whenever somebody tries to do something different, I mean, most cases they'll get shot down and that makes a developer just basically stick to the formula that's work for them. Right. If I can actually take you back in time to... Okay. Wait, 19... wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> There you go. 198 Okay. okay. Whatever. 19 some odd eight. Okay. You have your Super Mario, your Zelda, Castlevania, all their first iteration. Right. Did extremely well for themselves. Right. Then you got Mario 2, which, of course, was just a reshell Doki Doki Panic. We all know that. Zelda 2 basically said, fuck you to that original mold. Yeah. Early mold by that point, but that original idea. And then Castlevania 3 took the game to a whole other level, adding RPG elements and whatnot. Right. After that, though, they went back to the original. Even though they did extremely well, even the second iterations did really well, but they still went back to what was familiar to them. And then they stuck to that up until the platforms could support, you know, moving up to 3D, and then that's been the standard. Right. Because they're afraid to change it, I believe. Except for... Instances where, you know... The... Well, you're always going to have the instances where you have to change due to the platform you're making it for. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, you know. like, a 2D Super Mario would probably not fly well for... very Like, not fly very well in those days. However, when they give us new Super Mario Bros., we're like, oh, my God, this is so retro. I love it. Yeah. But could they get away with doing that for the last 20 years? Probably not. But then again, you have things like Mario Maker doing well. But... I guess maybe that's more of a um, back in the day type of things for you know guys like us probably more so than it is for gamers now. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I just I don't know. It just kind of boggles in my mind when I hear these. You know, you know, if you don't like something, that's fine. But to to go on, you know, um, to blogs or whatever the case and. Just, just be so attacked. I guess maybe what bothers me is the more like the attack, just like the rare of it uh, more than anything. But in another sense too, video games have had this kind of like you and I, we probably regard video games as an art form in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, and uh, most gamers probably do. But art is indicative of the creator's vision. And when you want to change that vision for your for your selfish reasons, that no longer is art. That's basically a bastardization of what you want. That's like going to Picasso and saying, "No, not like that, stupid," and then like handing yeah. him like watercolor brush or like stamps and saying, "Do it this way instead." Exactly. And you know, I and I know this. I know. I mean, anybody who's going to comment on this is probably just going to be like. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, which it wouldn't be the first time I've heard that today or this week. Um, <laughs> but it, <laughs> but I mean, I just, I, I get, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know where it stems from. And, and you know, like, let's give it another example. Um, Ghostbusters. We have a right. new go. We have a new Ghostbusters coming out. It's kind of shifted to a movie. Um, That's right. Yeah, it's all the same. All, uh, f- all female cast. Internet fucking explodes because of it. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the idea. I think it's a gimmick. I'll admit that straight up. I think it's a gimmick. 
I don't think that having all four females as Ghostbusters is necessary. Um, I think you could have made a good Ghostbusters with two women and two dudes. You know, I'm not I'm not going to say you know Ghostbusters shouldn't be women because that'd be dumb. Um, I think that's fine, but I think it's a gimmick, and I you know I said it was a gimmick, and I kind of left it at that to myself and to my you know anybody else who decided to listen. But then the internet explodes, and it was just like this crazy off off the wall sexist shit. Um, you know, it, once again, if you don't like the casting, whatever, fine. You don't have to like the casting. But when it comes down to it, there was just like, well, it's not going to be the Ghostbusters we remember. Well, of course it's not going to be the Ghostbusters you remember. They're all 70 years old. You want a bunch of geriatric Ghostbusters putting proton packs on them and falling over? What did you yeah. think, you know, what did you expect to, to happen one way or the other? One of them's dead. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, Harold Ramis you know, is a ghost himself. Yeah, exactly. So, what were you expecting it to be? Now, there's no easy answer to this. The easy answer would be, well, you should have just left it alone. Okay, fine. The other answer is, well, we could just, you know, uh, recast those roles to other people. Well, no, that wouldn't work either because, oh my god, you know, we wouldn't want that because that would, you know, rape our childhoods, apparently. And, um, not that, you know, not that that couldn't work. I mean, Star Trek did it, and look how much money those fucking movies have made in the last two of them. So, it's just, it's just this constant idea, once again, of everything having to be the way you want it to be in your mind, and it's not going to be that. But, you know, maybe in the long run, just vote with your wallet. If you don't like the idea of a Ghostbusters or a Final Fantasy coming out in episodes, if you don't like the idea, don't fucking pay for it. No one's making you. There's that. Oh, but now I have to because it's Final Fantasy VII, but I'm getting hate every minute of it. <laughs> you're going to cry while you're playing it. I, like it so much. <laughs> I hate myself. But, <laughs> like, and, and, and once again, I want to point out, I understand what the uh, concern is. It's not the concern that I'm talking about. You can you can have your opinion about anything that you want. But to go off on a tangent and be insulting on social media towards the developer, towards the director, towards the actress or the actor or whatever the case may be is just it, – it's – it's. I love the Internet and I hate the Internet. And that's one of the reasons I hate the Internet is because of that. There's no consequence when somebody posts something in a forum. Um so I don't know. I mean, am I completely out? Am I am like am I just out there? Do I not? I mean, what do you think? Well, okay. So for one camp, you have if you don't like the actors, that like they're they're just people who are doing their job. Right. Writers, they're getting paid to write this movie. They're doing the best they possibly can with what they've got. They know that in the reference, for example, um, Ghostbusters. They know they have a lot to live up to. Yeah. They're going to try their damnedest, and I'll give them credit for that. The actors or actresses, they're just getting paid to do their thing. Like you and I, we have, you know, that voice acting root thing we got going on. Um, we used to be, you know, members of this voice acting community back when we were, like, teenagers. Right. Way back in the old day. And we understand how that is. We're just people doing our thing. Like, I personally believe that the Internet is a cesspool full of people who are extremely opinionated. And if they don't like something, honestly, like you say, vote with your wallet. They'll get the idea when nobody goes to see it. They'll be like, okay, that wasn't really the best idea, now was it? Yeah. But if people go to it, they'll make more. And guess what? You'll get even more pissed off. Yeah. Because they're doing another one. Yep. Jenny McCarthy, oh, no, not again. All right. <laughs> that was your fault. <laughs> you mean Melissa McCarthy or Jenny McCarthy? <laughs> no, Melissa McCarthy. Sorry, okay. yes, it's fine. Jenny, McCarthy. Jenny McCarthy, what is she doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I get my McCarthy's mixed up. <laughs> As, yeah, I don't. I, I have no idea which one was which even more. Didn't like, wasn't Jenny McCarthy married to like Jim Carrey or something? No, they were dating. I think she's like married to Donnie Wahlberg now. Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. Wow. This conversation shifted. Okay, yeah. so what I honestly think would be way best for everybody is if you just kept your opinion to yourself. Don't buy it if you don't want it. Don't buy it and cry about it. Don't buy it and then post videos of yourself doing a Let's Play, crying about it. <laughs> and you get popular on the internet and make more money than me. Yep. Well, and you know, game. and it's not so much, if, if you don't like it, you just say, like, uh, not liking this and just leave it at that. 
pretty well. But, you know, but you, like in the case of like Bioware with Mass Effect, I mean, they were getting emails of like threats and all of that. That's just that's ridiculous. Stop. Nothing. You know, I, nothing is that bad to the point where you have to do that to someone. I because... think people also like threatening. This was a while ago. People were threatening like, what was it? Um, Jack Leeson from Game of Thrones. People just send like hate mail and threats to him personally because they don't like his character. So dumb. Like, what the hell do you think he's actually that? Like, fans of stuff are annoying. In general. <laughs> I hope we never get any. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whoops. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. Um, no, it, it, let's see. What's another thing, too? Like, oh, um, case in point, you were talking about Grand Theft Auto uh, PS2 emulation. They started, you know, putting PS2 games on PS4 to download. Yeah, people were huge on that, too, because uh, that news broke because when people bought uh, Star Wars Battlefront, it had the two emulated uh PS2 games, I think one was like the old Battlefront, something like that, and that's how the news broke that PS2 emulation was coming, and then they're like, okay, yeah, we, we're doing it, yeah, that's, yeah. but like, they kind of squeezed it out of Sony, it's like, okay, yeah, you were right all along, yeah, we, we did have that plan, but, yeah, continue with where you were going with that, sorry, is it interrupted well, you? No, no, it's fine, um, and, then it was, and then they came out, and the majority of them were fourteen ninety nine, uh, with trophy support and all that, uh, to play on the PS4. Once again, not fucking good enough. Fourteen ninety nine. That's way too damn expensive. And the best, and the best one is just like, I've already played this game before. I've already bought this game. I shouldn't have to shell out fourteen ninety nine for it. Oh, I'm sorry. So that means to say that if I went to my local GameStop, traded it in, they went back to, a year later, picked it up, and they charged me their price for it. I'm supposed to say, but I've already played that game. I've already paid for it. Shouldn't I get it for less? Huh. That is the most absurd thing I have ever heard in my life. Well, probably not the most, but right up there. It's way up there. <laughs> Yo, and once again, that just goes into entitlement. Businesses exist to make money. I hate to br- gather gather around, kids. Let let Brian tell you, tell you something. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In order for a business to keep on going, they have to pay money in order to pay the people who do it. So, in other words, if someone's uh taking on a PS2 game to put onto emulation on a PS4, you have to hire people to do that. And those people need to get paid. And in order for them to get paid, they have to charge a certain amount of money so they can make up for the cost. And there's economics for you, in a sense. That's it. And in the end, they're just people doing their job. Exactly. Doing a job they were hired to do. And that takes money. And once again, if you don't want to buy it, if you want to spend fourteen ninety nine for your PS2 game on your PS4, maybe just break out your PS2 and buy it used on Amazon for cheaper. Really? Just pick your like pick your platform and just shut up about it, right? Yeah, right. If you don't want the trophy support, then yeah, just... Yeah, exactly. And that's the only reason people are buying it, because they want the trophy support. I guarantee it. You can even like, probably get any PS2 game for even like a couple of dollars at any like pawn shop or yep. any like CD joint downtown. So, so yeah. it's it's one of those things. Like I don't I don't have a direct answer. It could be because we've been spoiled um, with games, and when something we, you know when something's different, then we kind of just say, "Oh, wait a minute, I don't know about that. I don't like that." You don't like it because you don't know a damn thing about it. Um, it's really what it comes down to. Maybe we're just creatures of habit. Maybe that's all it is. Maybe if we don't understand something, then we're just like, "No, fuck that." That's potentially possible. And yeah. we really don't like to deal with anything that's different than what we anticipate it would be. Exactly. We're all a little autistic and that everything has to be the way we feel it should be. And if there's any deviation from our routines, it's danger. I have an autistic daughter, so you know. That's why I'm making that reference. Oh no. no I get <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not poking at autistic people. How dare you, sir? No. No, no. I understand. No. I understand. I understand. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes. Yeah, you know, I guess it's all there's I mean, this this podcast isn't going to change that. But just do us a favor, folks. Anybody who listens to this and now that I've alienated half the gamers out there, um, <laughs> you know, let's just take a step back and look at the bigger picture. You know, let people make the game that's intended. 
regardless of how you feel it should be. Because when it comes down to it, you're not the one making the game, and you're not the one shelling out for it. Unless it's a Kickstarter game, then you have a re- you might have a reason to bitch a little bit. But even then, you never know what the outcome's going to be. So, you know, let people do their art. Enjoy it. Don't enjoy it. Don't buy it if you don't want to, or buy it. Whatever. But, you know, just let people do their thing. That comes down is pretty much what it brings down to. So, now that I got off my soapbox, is there anything else you wanted to bring up? <laughs> uh, well, just some supplementary points that I had uh, originally kind of thought about, and I wrote down as you were just kind of talking that I wanted to actually mention. So, if you have, say, a game like Castlevania, where it took a major turn uh, with Symphony of the Night on PlayStation, right? Right. That's like the the definitive Castlevania games. Like, oh, I want to play Castlevania. Which one do I play? Symphony of the Night. Bar yeah. none, right? And that has been that format with the Metroid-style exploration gameplay. It's called Castleroid or Metroidvania. Now, do you think they're even afraid to change that? Like, they, they did a couple forays into 3D with, um, oh, was it Lords of Innocence? Something like that. Oh no! You mean the new Konami ones? Um, yeah. For the yeah, they did. The first one wasn't too bad. The second one was not good. Um, but even with that, I don't know if it sold well enough to condone to keep on doing it like that. Exactly, um, and that's the thing. The side-scrolling ones do so well because they know what we want. I, I would I would buy that in a heartbeat if they made one on 3DS, like a 3D Castlevania. Where the hell have you been all my life? Yeah. Well, they had they had a few good ones on the regular DS too. Those were yeah. really good. They were all all the 2D exploration ones with your giant sprawling map. They had uh, three on Game Boy Advance, three on DS, and none on 3DS so far. They did actually Lords of Shadow, I think, right. on 3DS, but that wasn't the side. I think it actually was a side scroller, but not the kind we were used to. Right. No, it, was, it was kind of more like the original, I believe, in that sense. I don't know, man. So are they afraid to? Because they don't want to get bioware <laughs> I don't know if it's really so much afraid. I think it's just more of not planning well. I mean, the fact of the matter is, games are getting harder to make. And it, it, they take they probably take more time than anything that we're used to, uh, back from the uh, compared to the past, anyway. And I think there's also that need to get it out as soon as you can. Um, with a lot of developers, and I think with Konami and that, you know, the Castlevania thing with those uh, 3D ones, that's what it was. The first one wasn't so, wasn't so bad. It wasn't too bad at all, but the second one sucked. And I think it just came from that, you know, well, the, here's this first one did okay, let's get the second one out while it's fresh in people's minds as much as possible, and they just, it, they're, it just wasn't what people wanted, story-wise, or probably gameplay-wise for that matter. Um, so I don't know. It's a, it's a fickle, it's a a slippery slope, I guess. Lest we forget about Castlevania 64. <laughs> I didn't get into it. I know people that actually liked it. Um, it wasn't my thing when I played it, but that was a long time ago. I might have a way different opinion now. Probably not. I'll probably hit, you know not like it even more. But um, I don't know, it's just a slippery slope, you know, with anything. In another case in point, you know, it could be you know the new Halo. Um, Still sold well, but in the grand scheme of things, people weren't digging the branching storylines between Master Chief and the other guy. Um, I love the Arbiter. Yeah. No, not the Arbiter. Oh, um, I'm thinking Halo 2. Yeah. Yeah. No, the new one, uh, Locke. Um, oh yes, Spartan Locke. Yes. Yeah. I haven't played and, it before. And I don't people know. weren't <laughs> people weren't digging that. They liked the online. The online was great, but as far as the you know the story, you know. But once again, they they went and tried to do something different, and you know. Critically and user-wise, a lot of people weren't weren't into it. So I don't know. It's like once again, you can't. It's hard to dictate, you know, where this comes from. But I think ultimately it just comes from us wanting our expectations filled, and when they don't, then we kind of cry about it. But you know, after a couple months, it goes away. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> they hate to be that guy, but of course you have the same thing with your Call of Duties and. God forbid, your Battlefields. Yeah. Like, you played uh, Hardline. As far as I can tell, it's pretty much Battlefield with cops and robbers. I mean, it's I mean, basically it was, it was the same. okay. 
It was okay, but it's like I don't know what I was expecting in my mind for it to be. I never, I was never a big Battlefield fan. Not that I, you know, I don't hate the games by any stretch of imagination. It's just I just n- didn't get into them um, that much, and maybe that was my own fault, or maybe that's just my way of thinking about it. Um, there was another thing, like oh, Ninja Turtles. There's another one I wanted to go with. Ninja Turtles, the new, the, well, the new incarnation of it. Yeah, the reboot. Yeah, came out. People saw what the trolls looked like, had a freaking hissy fit, um, which I do agree, they're way too fucking big. Um, but, once again, that's that's not made for me anymore. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. made for, they're not made for us. They're not we're, trying to impress, like, the, like, the, the yeah. people who grew up with it. Yeah, they're trying to impress our kids. That's what it's geared towards. And then what the funniest thing is, though, I say that, but then I see the trailer for the second one, and I'm 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 watching it, and like turtles look the same, okay, or their faces are a little bit different, but not too much. And then I'm like, okay, let's see what this thing's about. I'm not expecting it. And the first movie, by the way, it was okay, in my opinion. It wasn't great. It was fun to watch one time and then be done with it. Um, and then the second trailer came out. I watched it, and I'm like, they're they're in the turtle van. I'm like, okay. We kind of knew that from the end of the first one. And yeah. then, it started, then it started shooting out manhole covers. I'm like, is that thing shooting out manhole covers like my toy I had when I was, you know, eight years old? Holy huh. crap, it is. And then the best part was when Bebop and Rocksteady got shown. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then Krang's in it now? They just announced that? So now it's just like, well, maybe we should go back. Yeah, you know, they they saw how, how it actually did successfully, obviously, if they did another one. Yeah. And even though people were pissed off, they still watched it. Yeah. And, 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 and the point being is, because of that, you know, kind of mediocre response to it, they're like, well, maybe we should go back and try to get these adults in the theater a little bit more. So let's put in everything they love, Baxter Stockman, Bebop and Rocksteady, Krang, and the Shredder. So essentially, they're making the cartoon. Basically. And Casey Jones, by the way. Yeah, exactly. So basically, they just revert it because they th- they're they probably thinking that's what people want. Which it may be. I'm not going to say. I mean, I dig it. <laughs> but oh, yeah. They got, but, it. Yeah, but, you know, that's me. So once again, this that thing is like, let's give the people what they want. Instead of doing our own vision of it. <sighs> they did their own foray, and they saw yeah. how it did. Yeah, exactly. So, at any rate. Hey, did you have something with movies that you want to talk about? Actually, yeah, I did. Wow. Okay. Well, we kind of just sidestepped over that, didn't we? Okay, so there are a bunch of movies coming out uh, this Friday, tomorrow. But by the time this is out, it'll already be out. Um, I'm just going to go over a couple of them that seem to pique my interest and the ones that I can make fun of. Okay. Okay, so we have Moonwalker starring Ron Perlman and Rupert Grint. Is that the one where they're trying to disprove this the uh, moon landing? Yes. Okay. And then we have Band of Robbers. Uh, this is all on July, January 15th, by the way, releasing. Okay. Um, apparently, they reimagined the uh, Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer as a, uh, a uh, pet, petty criminals. And they're pulling off a heist. Yes. Yes. Re- reimagined okay. literary... Giants. Gotta love that. And we have The Intruders, which is kind of like The Strangers, except with more crazy. Or <laughs> Home Alone with Psychosis. Oh, okay. I'll check it out, maybe. The front of it, like, the actual cover art looks a lot like Cabin in the Woods, but with knives sticking out of the bottom of it. Oh, and it has nice. nothing to do with it. It's just, it's just this house with, like, knives sticking out of it. I'm like, what the hell? Gun covers that. And then you've got Norm of the North. I wouldn't watch it, but it seems to be Madagascar with Lemmings. But it's okay, though, because they're sneaking into New York instead of escaping it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I saw a preview for that. I'm like, I pretty much thought it was Madagascar when I saw it. Yeah. But I'm like, oh. With a polar polar bear, I think. Yes, Madagascar with polar bears and and lemmings, and they're escaping, and they're trying to get into New York City. Yeah. Just throw the penguins in there, just get it over with. Yeah, exactly, because that's what people want. Exactly. That's pretty much all I really had to make fun of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I saw the preview for that one that you, you were just talking about, and I was looking at the animation. I'm like, this just doesn't look all that great. I mean, I could be wrong, though. Uh, I don't know. Anything else? 
there are others, but just nothing that really piques my interest. I wrote down one, but it was like the entirely wrong week. So right. So I'll get to that later. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. All right, let's see here. Please go visit newgames.net at www.nugame.net for articles and reviews and this podcast, uh, amongst other things. Um, I don't think I don't have it. I have a Twitter account, but I don't know if I should give that out yet because I don't I don't want all these you know these women like flocking to me. Um, but don't you? Yeah, exactly. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you? <laughs> All right, if there's not anything else, I'm Brian Dahl. He is Steven Rico Suave Fortune. You're Word. listening to Yep, we are listening to the MPG podcast episode 2. We'll be back next week, presumably. And, and uh, until then, that's it. See you later. Uh-